I'm Rosa Mendez, and I'm here at the number one Long Island broadcast, Monty Ferro. I have the best time ever. Hey, listen, Daddy. You're listening to the number one broadcast, Monty and Ferro, Daddy, in Long Island. The best pro wrestling broadcast of all time, I think. Jimmy, I got to tell you, man, it feels good to be back on YouTube. It was uh, quite disappointing what happened to us, but we bounced back pretty fairly quickly. Well, what, what else would we do? We're almost at 5,000 subscribers. Well, speaking of that, man, yeah. we need more members. Okay. What do you think we need to do to get the people of those 5,000 subscribers to come on and, and join the team as a Monty and a Faro member? Nudity is out of the question. Any other ideas? <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I don't know. But what I, I do have a few ideas. Well, just like Prell, they should tell two friends, and they can tell two friends, and so on and so on. Hit the like, hit the subscribe. Check out all our content. But that's, you know what? That's why you're, you're the star of the show, because guess what? Members get special content. Even we spoke about it. Farrell came to me one day, and he goes, man, what's the deal? I can't even watch some of these videos because I'm not a member. And I said, there you go, Farrell. You got to be a member because this is what the members get. They get free content that nice. none of the other fans that watch this show get. That's right. You get free autographs from some of these wonderful stars that come in, right? Nice. All you do is you go to the MNP webpage, or, right, our own page, yeah. and shoot us an email and say, hey, man, I want a picture of... Tommy Rich, I want a picture of whatever. And boy, that's on its way. We give them their choice. That's right. We rock. We do rock. And you need to rock too. Join. It Vince's storyline of hanging you with the rope and sticking with your convic convictions. Was that a mistake in hindsight? Because maybe you could have done more for fans and young athletes out there if you just would have went with it. Or do you, do you still stand by your decision? I think about it all the time, man, and um, in a way, I wish I probably would have went home and go went ahead and did it. But other things were were, were playing as part in that too, like, like you know all what? the drugs that were back there, all you know, so forth, so forth. And then I caught myself taking Viking and Salma, which I never did. I mean, I never took an aspirin, man. I started taking Viking and Salma, and I didn't want to get in that rut and be the next one on the RIP list, you know? Mm. So, I mean, in a way, I'm glad I left when I did because otherwise I probably would have got caught up in drugs. Did you feel lonely too, like a man on his own island? Again, we're just fans. You lived it. But from what we hear or you see, it just seemed like the boys just either for whatever reason were jealous or – they just didn't get along with you. Did, was that part of the problem, too? You didn't feel like you were part of a family? Right. There was a lot of jealousy going on. And I, for one, you know, didn't care. But the fact that not one, well, one guy did, Razor Ramon, but not one guy tried to help me in the business. You know, they could have put me to the side and said, hey, I met this, that, and other. But Razor Ramon was the only one to put me to the side. After my matches, he would watch my matches behind the curtain. And he pulled me over to the side and he told me, do more of this, do less of this. To this, do more of this. I mean, he just helped me out as much as he could. Was he and like I that? would expect that I would expect that, you know, Farouk being a world champion and being black, that he would have done it. You know, put right. me to the side and helped me out. Right. But that never happened. It was just jealousy. Was Scott Hall like that in general with the uh the up and coming talent? You know, or did he just, you know, take a liking to you? I don't think he's like that with everybody. I think he just took a liking to me. Interesting. Okay. So you just talked about Simmons not reaching out and helping you, which makes a lot of sense. Was he the same way towards like a Mark Henry, who also was green at that time, or even a Dwayne Johnson, or did you see him helping them? No, I never saw him helping anybody, but he probably did help them because, I mean, he wasn't jealous of them, but he was jealous of me. But uh, he probably did help them out a little bit. And, you know, that would have been so cool if he would have helped me out and talked to me, being that we were mashed up together. And it seemed like he would have pulled me to the side and talked to me about certain things. But, no, he never did. It's really interesting. Let's uh, 
switch gears a little bit. I wanted to get your thoughts on the night that Owen Hart passed away. I know that you were, I don't think you were with the company at at that point when he did, but your thoughts on the night that Owen Hart obviously met his untimely demise. Man, that broke my heart, man. Yo, you talking about one funny dude, one good guy back in the locker rooms? That broke my heart to see you know Owen go out like that. And especially because I heard the rumors that he was telling Vince that he didn't want to do it. That he didn't want to come down off, off the top of the ceiling like that. But you know, they got their ways of making you do what you gotta do. You think Owen Hart's wife, Martha, is doing uh Owen Hart's legacy a little bit of a disservice? not working with the WWE. She does stuff with AEW. Uh, She obviously hates the WWE. Is it a disservice, though, to Owen Hart himself? Well, I I think if she got WWE, it would help her out a lot more with her situation and as far as her charity goes. But I can't blame her for hating them. Do Do you hate Vince McMahon? No, I don't hate him. I don't hate him at all. Is Vince McMahon a good person? Um, I wouldn't say that either. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say he's a good person. But, I mean, I, I don't hate him at all, man, because, you know, he opened the door and let me in, you know. So, and I appreciate that. In the end, do you think that you were just resented because Vince had such a, uh, you know, a, an interest in you during your time there? Into what now? Do you think that in the end that a, a lot of the hatred you received or a lot of the uh, you know friction you got from the locker room, do you think that in the end it was because Vince McMahon himself was very supportive of pushing you and the other guys were all just a bunch of jealous fucks? Oh, brother, you hit that right on the head. That That's exactly what it was. You hit that right on the head. Have you ever thought about possibly reaching out to a lot of your detractors and trying to like, you know, hey... Let's have a talk about this after all these years of bashing. You ever thought about trying to clear the air with some of these people, or is it just like, screw them? Well, brother, I see where you just let a dead dog lie. I don't, you know, believe in catching, you know, reaching out to any of them. I mean, because it was what it was, and it's in the past. Mm -hmm. But if I had one question, I would ask Ron Simmons, why didn't you as a brother reach up and try to help me? If you, you know, want to criticize me so bad, why didn't you, you know, try to help me when I was there? I know the answer. You know, like he said he was jealous. And then the whole nation room was jealous. Because, I mean, you got to see. Here this kid is coming off the streets. Getting WWF. Nobody knows him. And he's being pushed hard. And he become the first black intercontinental champion. And would have became the first black world champion. You know, and they didn't appreciate that. Because they have been in the business for 14 years, you know, 10 years. And here this kid, I ain't even been in business for a year, and he gets this kind of push. So they were very jealous. So I don't blame I don't blame him for being jealous. I probably would have been jealous too. Kevin Nash has a podcast called Click This. Um, seems to be a very intelligent guy. Uh, you talked about Scott Hall. He had a very close relationship with Kevin Nash, as you know. How is yes. Kevin Nash as a human being? How was Kevin Nash what? As a human being. As uh, a Kevin seemed to be really cool, man. I mean, I didn't I didn't have any problem with Kevin. And he seemed to be a, a pretty cool dude, man. Hmm. 